very excited. This is my, like we were talking about earlier, this is my first Zoom podcast. So congrats on being the first. <laughs> um, I think, so I kind of, I always like to kind of jump into the injury just because I think that kind of gets us on a good momentum and just kind of gets us talking. So I know you had a really difficult year last year and I kind of just want you to kind of walk us through what that was like for you and also kind of talk about what it was because I know some people might not be aware. Yeah, um, so this past year I had, I was diagnosed with um, PE, which is pulmonary embolism, and I had multiple, essentially what it means is I had multiple blood clots in um, both of my lungs. So um, the process to finding out was actually really unique. Um, I like was in, I was making sure I was in really, really good shape because of like how many people we lost last year. And I was one of the ones that they relied on outside of the five starters. So I wanted to make sure that I was ready and conditioned and um, just like equipped with the skill set to take on like this, this year, this past season. Um, So we come back for, after summer school, we had the month off um, and we come back to like practicing like the usual. I mean, most athletes know you come back and you get right to it. So um, we were at practice and it started off really well. Like everything was going how I expected it. Like I was, um, I was doing pretty well conditioning wise and like the things that I tried to work on started to be um, to show. So I was feeling good. And then I don't know, like two weeks before I found out what I had, um, it was like a slow progression of like getting worse. And I was really confused because I have asthma already, sports induced. So like I've had that growing up, but I like grew out of it. Um, In high school, I didn't really have to take an inhaler unless it was really bad. I didn't have asthma attacks anymore. Um, So it was weird because I was relying on it a lot more. And Um, I was just like getting worse and worse and worse. And with our team and like how coach structures practices, we do like scrimmages and, um, a lot of like up and down, we have practice players. So we were going against guys and I just started to notice, like when I was playing, I just could not get up and down the court. It got to the point where I couldn't even go like up and down without just being completely winded. And Um, so it was like a slow progression of like not being able to breathe and, and run and do the things that I had been like ready for, which was really, really weird. And I just remember this one practice, like the practice before, like the last practice that I actually participated in before I, um, found out, um, we were doing a scrimmage and I stopped at half court and like could not breathe. And I looked at CO and I like, my eyes started watering and I, CO was Carol, um, an assistant coach. And so I looked at her and my eyes were like watering and I was like, I don't know what's going on. I cannot breathe. And I like stepped off the court, had a sub come in and just like wiped it off. Cause for me, I don't, I'm not somebody who like wallows in something. Like if it's hurting, I'm going to be like, okay, I need to figure out what to do to make it better. I don't really ask for help even though I had noticed it for like a week and a half, I didn't really ask for help because I was like, it's probably just asthma. Like it's fine. Um, And so I like sat out and then the following day we had media day and that like the day before where I had the practice and I started crying, it like, it had been getting worse. And I first started feeling it in my right shoulder. It was like, somebody was like sticking, stabbing a knife into my shoulder every time I breathed. Um, And so the following day, like that night, I went to bed and I could not sleep. Like I was in a lot of pain. Um, It started like going from my shoulder down to my right side, like my abdomen area and into like my stomach. It was so weird. I was like, I don't know what's going on. And I like woke up in the middle of the night um, sweating and in a lot of pain. And I texted my, texted my trainer Anne and said something's going on it's been going on I don't really know what's going on (laughs) but I'm dealing with something and I don't really know how to explain it but I have a lot of pain um and it was like it was very quick so it had progressively gotten worse like my breathing but then these two days it just like it happened so quickly so it was like that practice led into the night 
where I like could not get any sleep. And then we had media day. And that morning, like I woke up and I like started having to take very, very shallow breaths. So like I already had asthma, which didn't help the situation. And then I had to like, I had to like calm myself. If I started to get anxious and I had to breathe hard, it would just send a pain down my entire right side. So we had media day. I went to class and I barely made it through classes because I was in so much pain. Like I, I have never experienced this much pain in my entire life and um, got to media day. And I just remember like telling myself, like, just get through this. Cause obviously with media and especially women's basketball, you cannot show any emotion. Like they're going to ask a lot of questions. They're going to take to like the internet and start like, Oh, well, she doesn't look good enough. She like, something's going on. So it's like, I really have to pull myself together so I can put on like a front that everything's okay. So everybody was like having fun and everything. Um, People were getting interviewed and we sat down to take pictures. And I just remember like, I could not laugh. Like people started like joking around and I like couldn't because it hurt so bad. Like it would just send a shock through my right side. Um, And I was like holding back tears the second half of it where it was really bad. And um, we sat down and we took a picture, like our picture. And then they told us we were done. And I immediately like went upstairs into the locker room and started calling and called my mom. And I was just, I lost it. Like I was bawling. And I said, I can't breathe. And I'm in a lot of pain and I don't know what's going on. Um, So fast forward, like I talked to Anne. She's like, just go see Dr. Higginson. Like, let's see how it goes. I don't really know what's going on. Um... So it might be worth like an x-ray or something. Like at first I thought it was like my rib, my rib cage or something because it like where it was located. So I went to see her and I like started crying with her. Um, And she, and I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know like what's wrong. And she, she goes, well, we have three options. You can either like go back to sleep tonight wake up tomorrow we'll get an x-ray whatever because it's like 6 p.m so the only option was going to the emergency room and in my head I'm like okay it's not that bad I'm not going to the emergency room like I'm fine so she's like you can either go back to bed um and we'll take you tomorrow morning you can we can try to go to an urgent care get an x-ray done and see how that goes or we can go to the emergency room and I was being like stubborn and I was like, oh, I'll just go back to bed. Like, it's fine. I know I couldn't sleep last night, but it's probably going to be better, whatever. So like when I laid down, that's when it's the worst. Like I couldn't, it was like I was suffocating when I laid down. So the night before I had to sit up and fall asleep like this, basically. Um, so I was like, nah, like it's fine. And she said, I don't know. Like you seem really bad. I... And I said, well, what do you think I should do? And she said, I think it'd be like worth going to the emergency room just to make sure everything's okay. And I was like, I kind of was in the state of like, are you kidding me? Like, I don't want to be a wuss, go to the emergency room and all of a sudden everything's fine. And it's just like something stupid. So I'm like, no, I, I think I'll be okay. And she's like, I really would feel better if you went to the emergency room and we got it all figured out instead of you going back to sleep because nobody knows what's going on. It's like, okay, so she takes me, um, well, Anne takes me to the emergency room and I end up being there for like three hours. So like I get an x-ray, nothing shows up. I get an ultrasound, um, nothing shows up. And then they're like, the only thing that we can do is like a CAT scan. And I've never really had one because I've never had anything like, I've never broken a bone. Like the only thing I've broken is a thumb. So it's like an x-ray. Um, but I went in and this, it's like two hours in cause the emergency room for some reason is not an emergency room. It's like super slow. So I go into a cat scan. I've had that experience. Yeah. It's <laughs> it takes, really slow. It can take like, a while what? sometimes. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> so, um, go to the cat scan, whatever, get it done, come back. And the doctor walks in and so it's just Anne and I, cause my mom like was at home in Ohio. So she was like four hours away. And I was just keeping her updated, but I was sitting there and he comes in and he's like, so, cause at first they thought it was like a gallbladder thing. Like they thought, I don't know what they thought, but not, they weren't expecting what happened. So I was just like, okay, what's the news? And I could just tell by his face that something was wrong. He's like, you have um, a pulmonary embolism. And I'm like, okay, what the heck is that? I'm like, I've never heard of that before. And then 
he's like, essentially you have, it shows on the CAT scan that you've had, you have multiple blood clots in both lungs. And I look at it and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like it didn't really sink in. And then, um, and so she's like, okay, well, what do we do like about this? Cause she's like, I've never had an athlete that's like had this before. And so she's like asking all these questions. And then, um, like an hour later, like I call my mom and she immediately gets on the road. And it's like at this point, like 12, cause she gets there at four in the morning and, um, and D- Dr. Higginson comes by and sits like, and sits with us. So she was in there. It was me and, and Dr. Higginson, um, when the news came in and, uh, Dr. Higginson looked at me and she was like, like this, I will never forget this. I like got chills after she said it, but she looked at me and she's like, if you would have gone to sleep last night, like tonight, cause I, the pain was so bad in my right lung because there was an infarct. And that means that like part of my lung started to die off because the blood clots were cutting off like the circulation to it. So that's honestly the only reason that I like found out about it because of the serious pain. So if it wouldn't have like started to cut off blood circulation to like my lower quadrant um, of my right lung, then I probably would have never known until it was too late. Um, but Dr. Higginson looked at me and she said, if you would have gone to sleep tonight, there's a good chance like you might not have woken up because she looked at like the CAT scan and they were like really big and there were multiple. So she was like, I'm really, really glad we made this decision. Um, so it was like really, really scary, but I don't think it hit me. Like I was like, I think when she said those words, it, it hit me like more than it would have. Um, if she hadn't, but I was like, what? So it was really, really interesting. But then my coaches came and sat with me until my mom got there. So it was like really nice to have the support through it all. So what was like, how are you doing now with it? And what was like kind of the solution that you had to like, I guess the rehab you had to go through? Yeah. So they told me that it was going to take there's definitely three months where I could not do anything. I can't um, run or like all I could do was go to sleep. Oh my God. Can you hear that? The yeah, it's, all, it's, it's not that bad though. I'm good. <laughs> Cause I well, can shut, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Zoom. I know. Okay. The, my sister's windows were open, so. All right. <laughs> no, but they told me that, um, so three months for sure no activity whatsoever that meant like I couldn't even lift like anything I couldn't do anything honestly all I could do was go to class um and when they said that I was like whoa like I think that's when it hit me of the fact that like this is real and then one of the so one of the doctors he wasn't even my doctor I don't really know what he was doing in there but he came in like I think he was a nurse or something and he's like oh you're the one with the peas and I was like, yes. And he's like, there's a good chance you're never going to play again. Like, he wasn't my – I don't even know who he was. Like, Ann was sitting there and was like, who is this person? Because, like, he definitely was part of the hospital, but nobody really knew his place because that was the first time we saw him, and then he never came back because Ann basically told on him and was like, he's not supposed to be saying this to a patient. Um, but he came in and was like, yeah, there's a good chance you're never going to play again. So when he said that, I was like – wait a minute, like, nobody really said that, like, this could literally, sh- like, take everything away from me, so, um, like, the doctor that I had came back in, and I was like, is it true that, like, I might never play again, and he said, well, yes, that's a possibility, but, like, we're gonna work with you, and you're young enough to, like, bounce back from this, so that was, like, really reassuring to hear, because that guy came in out of nowhere, and I was like, what, so, um, they said three months, nothing. So I couldn't do anything at all. And then the whole thing was like three to six months. So like at three months, I got checked to see if I um, have to try to think. So at three months, it was to see if I had to do the full six months of nothing. So towards the end of three months, I could do a little like jogging and stuff, but I couldn't, I and was like taking it really slow because I wasn't going to play the year anyway. So she's like, there's no need to rush back. Um, Abby, when I would see you on the road, you were like 
it would start with like walking up and down the stairs, right? Like yeah. in arenas, on road arenas, it was, it was, I think it's interesting to like tell people like how at the, at the bottom you had to start, right? It was just running or just like even walking upstairs was tough yeah. after three months, right? Yeah, it was really weird. It was like learning how to do the things I've always known how to do. And it was like step by step walking and then slowly into jogging and then into sprinting and then into weight lifts. Like it was just so slow. And it was, I think that's what was so hard was the progression of it was just so slow. Do you, do you think that since this was something that like you couldn't physically see, I guess, like, do you think that yeah. that had like a mental aspect? Like, cause I know we've talked to some people and it's like, if it's something internal and you can't do basketball because of it, like you kind of, ha it's harder on you because you can't show people what's going on. You just kind of have to like yeah. tell them. Yeah. So like growing up, it's always been a thing of like, if I, if I don't look, my mom would always tell me if I'm not bleeding out or on my deathbed, then I need to push through. So this has been like extremely hard for me because I'm not, I mean, yes, I was, essentially like in a way on my deathbed but to me it didn't really feel like it like it never registered but like the fact that you can't see any anything that was going on like I looked normal to everyone like at games like the first few games that we had everybody was like oh when is she coming back she looks fine like everything's cool and I'm like oh everything's not cool like <laughs> just two weeks ago I was in the hospital for three days so I don't know it's just, I think that's what the hardest part about this whole thing is because I not like it's a trophy or something, but nothing to show, like to show that I went through it. So it's like, it's all up to them believing that I actually did have something. So I think that's where like videos like from Steph Curry and stuff like that really helped me feel stronger about it because I was like, okay, people are recognizing that like, this has not been easy. And just because I'm not like in a cast or, anything like that doesn't mean make it any less of a like issue. Bailey, didn't you kind of deal with that a little bit with your injury too? Because it was kind of an injury like Abby's that when you say it out loud, people don't know what it is. And then also you looked fine a lot of the time, right? But your legs, they wouldn't, they didn't respond the way you're used to the same way she's saying like she'd go up the stairs and it wasn't the same. And so it's tough, right? Yeah. And like, I like he said like I had nothing to show for it until I did get the surgeries and then I started having scars um but yeah before that it was just kind of like everyone's like oh like you're fine like yeah yeah but I I don't I mean hearing what you had to say like that's crazy I don't know but um something you talked about the first time you were talking was how like you have so many expectations being on the women's basketball team here in Notre Dame and I think that that's such an interesting perspective because I am from the soccer team. Obviously, we don't get that much media presence. Um, but I was looking on your Instagram and something that I kind of wanted to just talk about was the post you made explaining your injury. Um, I kind of just want to know, like, like, what was going on in your head when you finally had to share that with everyone? And I think it was a really cool way that you got to do that because I can tell you, like, kind of put a front on and you're not, like – like you don't really want to tell people what's going on, but obviously you had to because you weren't playing. So what was it kind of like, was that a breath of fresh air to let people know or was that a scary moment for you? Um, I think it was like a mix of like nervousness because I didn't know how people re re would react because sometimes fans can be like, what? Like, she's probably fine. Like, it's probably something else. Maybe it's grades. Like in the beginning, people thought I was, I was sitting out because of grades. And I was like, what? Like, no, <laughs> that's not it. Um, so I was just like, I was nervous about the reactions. Like I knew that our fans are amazing, but then it's like the opposing fans where I'm like, I don't want to hear it. Like, I don't want to hear what they have to say unless it's positive. Um, so it was also just like, I feel like my life, especially now that I'm in college, I've realized how much of it is out there for people to see. And you never like have anything to yourself where you can just process it first. So I was really nervous because I wanted to be a hundred percent confident in like what I've been through and like been able to fully process it before I just start telling people because I, I don't do well with like, we're pr like, we're thinking of you. We hope you're doing well. Like I don't, I don't do well with attention, I guess you could say, which is kind of ironic, but 
I just don't do well with like just soul attention on me. So it was like, it was a thing that I knew I had to do because I knew people would ask, like you said, but it was also like a thing of like, well, I kind of want this to still be like my thing where I can like process this and understand what's going on. Cause I, I think the biggest thing about going through all of this and then like, actually like I've reached out to, I've, actually made connections with a lot of other athletes who have gone through this in college, which I never had heard before. Um, so like through all of this, I've had, had this like desire to somehow like create awareness for it, but it's so hard because it's so unknown and everybody's symptom. Like after I've talked to people, it's just all different. So, um, yeah, I just, I knew that that post would definitely get a lot of attention and it, actually had a lot of people like sliding into my dms and talking to me about it and like processing processing it through because they've gone through the similar thing so it was comforting to know that other people were going through it that i hadn't like even thought about before um but yeah it was it was definitely a part it was a it was a tough decision but i'm glad that i was able to do that and i'm glad that i had like the media team to create something that i felt like was necessary and like good enough to put out there I think that's interesting too because like you said like you wanted to kind of grow awareness and I think with something like that and having the platform you do how do have I think that's really cool that that was something like that was a big reason of why you wanted to go ahead and post that like you did so I think that's really cool and admirable I have a question yeah (laughs) (laughs) okay um so now that, I mean, okay, we're in this world where no one, I guess, knows what's next with sports, right? But let's assume that things are going on a normal schedule for now. I guess, where are you currently with your status as far as like your health and whether or not you're going to be able to play in the future? Um, and just depending on where that is, just what has it been like handling that comment that I'm sure that's the first time when that doctor came in the room that wasn't supposed to be there that put that thought in your head. Yeah. I'm going to guess has been in the back of your head this whole time. Um, I guess, how did you, how have you handled that? But where, where are you on your process to recovery and just how are you handling that idea of if and when you'll get back on the court? Yeah. um, So I think the hardest part was like being on the blood thinners. I was on blood thinners for like the full three months. So the thing that was really hard was like flying and travel because when you're on blood thinners, it's a little bit different. So it's going to affect me for the rest of my life because of if I go farther than six hours, like in a flight, I have to go back on the blood thinner to make sure that um, it doesn't like clot again or cause any other, I guess, life-threatening situations. So um, hearing that, it was like, I thought I was out of the clear, essentially. Like, oh, I, I thought I bounced back. Like, and then I get a phone call where it's like, okay, but you have to, like, I have this um, gene, like it's called like the factor five Leiden or whatever. And it's like in my gene. And that's what causes blood clots. Like, I don't know how to explain it. It's weird and scientific-y, but um, so... I just like hearing that it's going to affect me for the rest of my life. And I have to make sure that I always tell doctors. It's like that thing where you always have to tell doctors about it, like just so they know. So, um, but the good thing about it all is the fact that I can still play and I do feel very strong, like a lot stronger than I was when I was dealing with this mentally and physically. Um, I've been basically doing what I was doing before it all happened. Like, running a lot and I'm really really thankful which sounds really bad but really thankful that we like are at home so I can just like work out constantly and like school's online so it's all up to me um because I think my my way of like clearing my head is like going on a run or working out and blasting music so I've been doing that a lot um and I'm like through all of this I've learned that the stronger I get the more confidence I have so I've been working on like making sure my mental state and my physical state are like up to par. So I feel more confident. And then with like everything that's gone on this past season, like I have even more of a 
want to say pressure on my shoulders to like come back and really make a difference. So I understand that. And instead of like letting it break me, I want to make sure that I can be prepared. So everything's been going well and I feel confident in like where I'm at now, but it's been like a really long road. <laughs> Let me just ask a clarification then just on like the injury itself. Like is like you say you can go on runs. So like is just, I don't understand if you push yourself to a certain level does that make you more at risk to like have a, I, I, for lack of a better term, like an episode or have something happen with your lungs where they give out or what? It, it sounds like travel in an airplane is a risk because of the uh, genetic, you know, uh, yeah. symptoms. But I, I guess my question is just that like where you are right now, like, is it risky to, cause I know they were talking about maybe not being able to play again. I see that means cause you'd be pushing yourself too much. So like if you go and play or you go and run, like, are you, is that a risk still? Or are you at the point where like going and exerting yourself is not at that risky level? Yeah. So all of my, I had a CAT scan, um, in January and everything came back clear. There was no blood clots. The infarct actually started to heal itself, like ba almost back to normal. Um, they were like, you're going to have probably 95% recovery, which is really, really good for like what I had. Um, and honestly, like I haven't even felt that 5% that's not there. And um, I mean, I can do everything I was doing before. Um, and I, they told me like the, well, at least I think this is what they meant. <laughs> the more that I train, the stronger my lungs are going to be. And so wow. the better it's go like, I don't, the better off I'm going to be in the end. Like I'm going to be more healed. So, so I've been pushing yourself is helping. Yes. Okay, cool. So in the beginning it wasn't, but right. it is now because it's, everything's gone. So that's great to know. I didn't, I, I thought it was the other way around. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to go back a little. I know you were talking about, you know, obviously you guys lost the five starters and I remember from like watching games and just knowing like you definitely were the one that stepped into the games like when they would sub off. So I know you got playing time that season. Um, so how, how much harder did it make all of this knowing that like, you were supposed to be the person that stepped up. I know this is a hard question. Tony's smiling. <laughs> no, it's great. It's a great question. Yeah. Cause it, yeah. And I'm sure that was one of the big things the media attacked was like, you were supposed to be the person jumping in now and you got this um, PE and now you can't. So how do you think that affected? Like, I'm sure your mental state, you know, um, that couldn't have been easy. I can't even imagine, but how do you think that kind of just played a role in all this? Um, I think when I first found out I was never, and I still am never like worried about myself immediately. I thought like the team, like, Oh my God, like I'm not going to be there. I'm not going to be physically on the court to like lead them and like be there for the freshmen. Like all I can do is stand on the sideline and help them when they get subbed out or like do something like that. So I think it was like, it hit me harder knowing that I wasn't going to be able to be there for the team and like lead in the way that I imagined it was going to be before it all happened. So I think that's what was definitely the hardest part. Um, just because like, like for me, the only, the most important part of this game, like basketball is the team aspect for me because I value that so much and I value the friendships and I value like the challenges and the highs and the lows going through it with like going through it with that team. Um, so the fact that I couldn't share the lows as like closely as they did because they were playing kind of like really affected me. And like, I just remember the, the first like two losses back to back, I just like started crying because I felt like I, like something had happened where I couldn't give like my all to the team. And I think that's what hurt me the most was the fact that I could not I couldn't physically go through it with them. Like I could only mentally go through it. And I'm sure, I'm sure it would be interesting to like hear, like have one of them talk about this, but I'm sure that them seeing you go through what you've gone through and still be like going through it and having a smile on your face and being there cheering them on. Like, I'm sure that goes such a far away with them. And I think that's something we talked about a lot on this podcast is like, even though you're out and you're hurt, like, you can still have such a positive impact on your team and being the leader you are in your team. I'm sure that went so far with them just being there for them. Yeah. I always made it a point. Like 
I think I came in this past season with smiles way more than I came in my freshman season, not only because I was, like, scared my freshman year, but sophomore year, I, like, I had a a switch flip because I was like, okay, you have to be there mentally. You have to be there and be present every single day. And if the best you can bring is a smile and a good attitude, then you're going to have to do that because that's what the team needs. And I even remember, like, I had a few meetings with coach um, just about, like, what is my value to this team now after all of this? And she was just like, they need you to be emotionally available. Like, through all of this, like, I know that they're going to need you to be there for the highs and the lows emotionally, even though you're not going to be there physically. So I think that really, like, stuck with me, like, realizing, like, okay, I can still impact this team and I can still help them, even if it's not going to be, like, on the court. So I tried to make sure that I focused my energy on that this past season. Um and also, like, learning from the coaches and, like, sitting by them during games, like, hearing what they want and then relaying it back to the team. Because I feel like there's sometimes a divide of, like, they th- say things during the game, but, like, the team never hears it. So I would always try to, like, make sure that they knew, like, the team knew what the coaches wanted and the coaches knew what the team wanted. Like, I don't know. I tried to be the middleman um, of, like, communication because I was like, well, that's all I can bring an attitude, like a good attitude, um, a smile, um, communication. Like that's literally my job this year. And that's all I'm going to focus on. You remind me, do you know who Isis Young is? It's on Fordham. Fordham. Reminds me so much of her. Yeah. Well, because they're both basketball players, but uh, (laughs) (laughs) no, I'm just joking. (laughs) Because Isis talked a lot about like, so she was sidelined from ACL and she talked a lot about how like, she knew that she couldn't play so her she knew her main job was to kind of be like another coach to her teammates but because she knew that they would relay the message from her really well rather than their coaches so I just I don't know that kind of reminded me of her and I think that that might be I don't know that might be a basketball kind of thing. yeah because uh the Duke girl uh was it Kyla or Kyra, Kyra. Lambert yeah you know Kyra Lambert I remember 15 on Duke Oh yeah. yeah. She had no. the same, remember that same thing, Bailey. She was like, my job was to be the coach last year. Hey, wait, maybe that was that who I was talking about. No, ISIS did the same. <laughs> they, they both did the same thing. Yeah. ISIS has been broadcasting, but they both were out for like a year with an ACL. And I think the coaching staffs were like, when you have someone and you were just sophomore Abby, but you'd been around obviously a great team yeah. or a ton of new people this year. Like they need you to be that. Like you said, a lot of times I think coaches are aware of it, that like players can get through to players a lot better than coaches can get through to players. Yeah. That's just a, that's just the way it goes. So if they have a player that they can count on, that goes a long way. I think also like it's definitely when a coach steps in and has that injured player get more involved, like that just goes so far with the injured player. Like having yeah. them, like you don't even need to be nice about it. Just like give them a job because that helps them keep busy and makes them feel like they are still a part of the team. Yeah. So, even if it's not like, oh, you're injured, like we need to make sure you're busy. It's like, this is your job now. Like it gives yeah. you something to feel like you are a part of the team. It's really important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to talk about the Steph Curry video. And <laughs> he, right? Didn't you get shoes? Um, yeah, but it was like kind of a mix between like for that and for like a game. Okay. Um, so <laughs> kind of just tell us what that was like. And you can explain like what he said in the video and everything because that was really awesome. Yeah. So I was not expecting that at all. Um, uh, So we like had finished up practice and I was like, the team went into the, like to watch film. And I was just helping, I think somebody was shooting free throws, so I was rebounding. And then I went to put the ball away while they ran inside. And I was like the last person conveniently like I don't know if this was planned or what but I was like conveniently the last person in there Abby come rebound come rebound for me <laughs> <laughs> so I like run in because I can't remember if it was Beth or coach they like walked out and they're like where are you? like come on let's go and I'm like I'm not really not that like you know I'm not that important like why do I need to... <laughs> I'll be in there when I'm in there but I just like took off and started going in and then we sit down and I'm like I don't know why my heart was racing. I think it was just because I was like, oh shoot, I'm late, like kind of thing. So I like sit down and then I'm like, finally like, and then coach starts like immediately I sit down and then coach starts speaking at me and I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, what? (laughs) And then she said, so 
and then this is when I like got the full body like shakes I was like what is going on like did I do something wrong immediately I was like what did I do wrong and she then she starts saying like nice things and I'm like wait a minute I was like wait I'm not in trouble so I'm confused and everybody's like looking at me like they all knew what was going on which the team didn't but I think the coaching coaching staff did um anyway the tv pops up and James is like sitting there like working it and I'm thinking we're gonna watch film and then all of a sudden she like wraps up her like talk and was just like so somebody wanted to give you a little video and in my head I'm like what and I immediately I don't know if you guys have watched the WNBA draft but I immediately thought of like when players look at the screen of like somebody saying congratulations blah 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 and I'm like why am I getting this feeling right now and then Steph Curry's face pops up and I'm like this is a joke I'm like sitting there and then he says my name and I'm like what (laughs) I didn't even have a reaction because it was just so quick like it went from I think I'm late I think I'm in trouble to what like (laughs) I'm getting praise like somebody's like saying like somebody famous just popped up so I was like sitting there just listening to him and I'm just in awe like my face everybody else's face is like and I'm just like (laughs) what is going on right now um so yeah like I watched the video of like everybody's reaction probably like five times and watched every single per like a different person each time um but getting that I think that was what really pushed me to want to have an impact like and create awareness for this and all this stuff and then I had like my high school athletic trainer and then obviously all the trainers at Notre Dame like asking questions like what were the symptoms what were this what were that and I was like okay like maybe I can create some awareness even though everybody I've talked to like has a different symptom but the same thing the thing that was similar between them all was like birth control which was actually what kick-started my blood clots was not only like my factor five light in like gene thing but also the fact that I was on birth control because in the fine print like nobody ever reads it like all the symptoms on commercials like the list of symptoms um for my the birth control I was on is blood clots and you you never think like you're gonna get it you know it's like whatever I'm not gonna get this I'm immune like you know so actually like when they did all the research and everything the only thing that it tied back to was like my birth control and after I did like blood tests the factor five so like mixing them together actually like sped up the blood clots and like the growth of them so yeah I don't know um I think that video just opened my eyes to like the impact and the reach that I have. So it was really, really powerful. Um, And just comforting to know that like, not just my team and my family and my friends like support me, but people that are across like America, like know me and understand and believe in me and support me. So Yeah, but it's also, there's, like, this very small part of me that's, like, wow, the pressure is really on, like, this next season of, like, all these people know who you are. All these people know what you've gone through. Now it's, like, are you going to give them what they think that you can do? And it's, like, I don't know. I'm, like, excited because I love challenges like this, but it's also, like, I have a lot of different spotlights on me right now. So it's going to be interesting, but... I think it goes back to, like I said, just making sure that mentally and physically I am strong and confident. So, yeah. Have you though, I mean, I hear that and I I can understand why you're feeling that pressure, but I got to imagine, and I hope you've had a chance to think like this, like, have you thought about just like what it's going to feel like the first time you're back on the court and that like everyone that, or I think Bailey can attest this, almost every player we've talked to that's gone through an injury Like they've talked about that moment they got back and having a newfound appreciation for just like being able to play. Like even if that pressure sets in at some point, I have to imagine like just the, when you sit back and think about that first time getting on the floor, do you think you're going to have a newfound appreciation for just like basketball and being able to play competitively that you probably didn't have before this? Yeah, for sure. I mean, so after the three months I was able to like practice, I slowly got into practice, but I mean, every athlete knows practice is not the same as game. So I've had like multiple, I can't even count on like two hands, how many times I've thought about the first 
game day that I'm actually back in uniform. And hopefully, like, if all goes well, and, like, my goal is to – this is going to sound really bad, but my goal is to, like, start – <laughs> my first game back because I just I like I've just imagined sitting on the bench this is so dramatic but I'm sitting on the it. bench yeah, no, for sure. and then like being the last one called and then all of a sudden everybody just like standing up and like screaming my name which <laughs> hey, you gotta dream big when you come back <laughs> you gotta shoot for the stars. But that's, what, just... but that's what people think about right like that's what everyone thinks about it's yeah. the like we've been watching the jordan documentary and like the famous thing is the bulls starting lineups right yeah. and kids grow up like calling their name out for starting lineups that's a huge part of basketball so of yeah. course you've had that thought yeah so i've definitely like had that thought a lot um but i'm just really excited like whether or not i start or whatever like i know at least my mom will be cheering super loud when I check into the game. And that's all that matters. So I'm just like, I think the big thing is just to be back on the court and like have that feeling of adrenaline and like doing something bigger than yourself and like playing a game. Like, I don't know. I think I've just, I, I know what it feels like, but I also feel like I don't know what it feels like because it's been so long. So Bailey, you remember the video of you checking into the soccer game? Yeah, I I recommend you bring napkins because I was I was I told myself I was like I'm not crying I'm not crying as soon as I stepped on I just started bawling like I was trying to run while I was like <laughs> just be ready. But it was but like you said like she checked into a soccer game and yeah. normally you don't give get a hug from your yeah. teammate when you check in and Kelly gave you this huge hug. I remember we have it on video and it's super cool because yeah. like and again you just have a I mean I haven't gone through it but you said you have a different appreciation for it so um, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited. Um, we can kind of, we just want to talk about the coaching transition as we wrap up. Um, so it seemed like Muffet was a really big supporter throughout your um, PE. So kind of just talk about what it was like to hear that she's retiring. Um, it's really, really hard. Uh, I just, I wasn't like fully expecting it. Like I knew it was going to come while I was in college. I just had that feeling, but I didn't know it was going to be so soon. I didn't know she was going to like end on that season. So it kind of caught me off guard, but I mean, I'm so, so thankful for like the impact and the opportunity to like play underneath her. Um, She has like looking back after I found out that she was retiring, looking back about like at everything that she's given me and all of the support that she's given me through all of this, like, she is more than just a coach to me like she's somebody i would probably say is one of the most influential people in my life um just because of like everything that i've gone through and how she's never like failed to let me know that she's there for me um i I remember just i will never forget this feeling but i was in the hospital and i finally got moved up to like a floor instead of the emergency room so like 36 late hours later I finally got a room and she was in New York I'm pretty sure she was doing something I think she was doing a talk or whatever found out like she wasn't able to be there for me um she found out she flew back and literally the next day like she came in and hung out with me and she was talking to me and like at the end she was wrapping up and my mom and her were saying bye and she came over and I'm like I obviously can't move I'm laying in the bed and she like gives me a hug and then like whispers in my ear I love you and I I like froze I I don't I'm like about to cry I just like I can't even like verbalize the feeling of that because she's like my coach like she's critiquing me and challenging me but like in that moment she felt more more than a coach like she felt so much more than a coach and she felt like somebody who I don't know people always say like yeah my coach has my back like my coach is there for me and like says it but like that feeling of hearing I love you from coach McGraw I I don't even know like I got got goosebumps and as soon as she left I started crying because I was like oh my god like I made the right choice I think in that moment I realized I made the right choice to come here like this this is what it should be this is like what basketball should be like 
the constant support, not only from teammates, but like from your head coach. Somebody who literally impacts everybody every single day is super intimidating, challenges me, like is everything. Like she literally embodies somebody that I want to be in the future. Like I want, I want to be a leader. Like she just has paved the way for me. And just hearing that, like in that moment, it made me feel like I was on top of the world. I don't even know how to explain it, but it was so, I will just never forget it. Like I will never, ever, ever forget that moment. And um, it was just hard. Like hearing that she was retiring after everything that like we had been through, because as soon as I got out of the hospital, we went and got breakfast and she just was like super real. We went to Nick's patio actually. So shout out, shout out. Classic. Nick. Classic. <laughs> <laughs> what what time was it when you were there? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was super classic. She's like a huge fan of Nick's Patio. So we went there um, and just had like a really real conversation. And she was just like, I'm going to be there for you this season, but I also need you to be there for me. And it kind of felt like we're gonna, we were going to be each other's rocks through this past season. And I think that also helped me because I was like, I'm not only – going to be supporting like my team and being there and um, bringing a good attitude for them. But like, I'm also going to have to bring a good attitude and be there for my coach. Somebody who to me, like before all of this seemed invincible, but like through that conversation, I realized she's still human. Like, I think that's what people fail to see is the fact that like coach is still human. Like she still has a family. She still has feelings. Like just because she looks intimidating and like doesn't talk a lot, like to everybody else, like she is still human. And I think just through this, I've realized and like learned to, to appreciate her so much more. And I am really sad that I can't play another season under her, but I am so grateful for the season I did get to play under her and how much I learned and how much I got to learn this past season, just listening to her talk about basketball. Um, so it's just like, it's hard and I don't think it's going to, I'm going to realize it until I get to campus and I'm like, Oh shoot, like coach is not here. Um, but I'm just like so grateful for the impact she's like had on me because I don't think any, anybody will truly realize like what she's done for me. So yeah, I'm just like really grateful and super happy for her because she deserves this. Like she deserves to finally just relax and like be with her family. <laughs> Go golf a little bit. Just yeah. watch basketball <laughs> yeah. like, instead of coaching it. <laughs> so I'm like super excited for her and I know she'll be with us every step of the way. So I think that's cool. Like you didn't even cry or not, you didn't cry, but you didn't even like tear up talking about your injury. And then you talk <laughs> about it. I think that just speaks so highly of you. I think that's yeah. really cool. Um, yeah. And then I just, so I know tonight you're speaking at the Irish Town Hall. Um, do you just kind of want to talk about a little bit about what intrigued you to want to talk about um, mental health there tonight? Yeah. So I know as soon as Corinne asked me, I was debating because I was like, I could be, I want to be real with these people. <laughs> like I want to them to know like what I've actually been going through and how different it's been like being at home. Um, so I also like knew that I have been through a lot like this past year. So I was like, I know I can bring value to this. Um, and I'm excited. Like, I think it's important for people, especially student athletes going through this to hear that they're not alone and the impact that I can bring, even if it's small. Um, I think that's exactly why I decided to do it. It's just because I love the chance to like help people. And I know that, this is probably going to be like very small of a group, but I know that I think I'll have like an impact. So I'm excited. Um, I know it's just been a really challenging time for everyone, like not even student athletes, just families, people in general. Um, so just to give like my little spiel about how it's been going, I just hope that one person in the group is like, okay, well, I actually feel that. So um, yeah, I'm excited. It's not going to be like, I definitely am going to be real. I'm excited to just like speak and like let people know. Cause I don't think we, especially women's basketball, we don't get out a lot. We don't like hang out with like other teams. So I think that's what SAC brings to me is like the ability to reach out to various teams. So I'm excited to kind of just talk about that and just hear what they have to say too. And like, 
kind of bounce ideas off of each other. Yeah, I think, I mean, from my own experience too, like mental health is so underrated and it's just talking about it with other people is honestly like my favorite therapy. Like it's just yeah. so nice to know that we're all going through something. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, if you ever want to talk about it more too, we can always get you back on the pod. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm probably going to check into that tonight later too. So I'm excited to hear what you say. But Tony, yeah. anything? That's it. Abby, I think uh, you hit a lot of, I think you guys both covered all the great topics, but to your point, I think you were an inspiration to a lot of people on that team this year in the community. So I'm excited to see you back on the floor ASAP and I'm glad yeah. that you're doing well. Thank you.